I think here, when you go back and you talk about what's going on, and you talk about the politics of this, you just have to look at Dr. Fauci. I mean, he's, to me, he, he, he could be the NBA. He has spin moves better than Kyrie Irving. He keeps changing his tune. He, 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 he like, flips around first, no masks, then masks. Yesterday he gets out and he says that people need to wear goggles. At a certain point, it reminds me of the movie Booty Call. How has the public health crisis become a matter of red versus blue? Uh, Brett, what do you think? Well, first and foremost, we see hypocrisy. We see inconsistency in application and advice and, and mandates that are coming down from, from different states. You take the governor of South Dakota and what she's doing, um, she's, she's smart. She's uh, into the weeds. She studies the issue. She's also letting her people make good decisions while getting children back to school. And, and, and it's, that's very different than what we're seeing in New York. And so it's becoming political because I, I'm sad to say this because I never thought I'd say something like this. Uh, I'm very sad to see Democrats compromise accuracy, facts, and data all because they don't like who's in the White House and they want to keep the well, pandemic how are they as doing the issue how, they can how use. Are, how are they compromising the data? What do you mean? Well, first, w when you see the hysteria out there, it is a result of the increased numbers that we're seeing um, in, in those that have contracted uh, COVID. But what we, what we don't see is the general trend, the, the fall in the mortality rate, the increased in testing that we do in comparison to other countries. So you have Dr. Fauci that seems to suggest that, um, you know, church and, and other events and schools, we need to be incredibly careful, but says nothing on protesting. Yeah. So you, 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 we're, we're, we're bright enough to see inconsistencies uh, as American people in the messaging. You know, it's interesting today on the testimony on Capitol Hill to know that the head of the CDC, now that, that's not actually Dr. Fauci, that's Dr. Redfield, and he said it was important to get back to school for kids yes. health-wise, that it was a global health issue. Oh, it, it, yes, it, it is something. Let, let, let me give uh, Venu yeah. a chance yeah, to, go ahead. to answer. Please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm concerned. I'm a parent. I'm concerned about this. Kids need to be in school. Kids aren't going to be the ones that are that are getting coronavirus. They're not going to be the ones that are going to be spreading it. You know, it's incredible that I saw a stat that in New York City, one out of every four uh, teachers or workers in a in a school is high risk. Well, take them out. This begs the question of wh who's here for who? Are they here for the children? Or are the children here for them? Right? If it weren't for the children, they wouldn't have a job. But yet they want to keep getting paid. I think here, when you go back and you talk about what's going on, and you talk about the politics of this, you just have to look at Dr. Fauci. I mean, he's to me, he he, he could be the NBA. He has spin moves better than Kyrie Irving. He keeps changing his tune. He 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 like flips around first, no masks, then masks. He's talking about this. I mean, his involvement in gain of research function, which Newsweek printed, not you guys, Newsweek is yet to be talked about in greater detail. Yesterday he gets out and he says that people need to wear goggles. At a certain point, it reminds me of the movie Booty Call, which future Oscar winner or later Oscar winner Jamie Foxx was in, where he wrapped himself up in saran wrap. I think that's where we're headed with Dr. Fauci. So if, <laughs> the, 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 if we're gonna fix this, we gotta stop this, you got to keep the mic away from him because he's not helping. Uh, I never thought I'd hear Dr. Fauci and booty call in the same sentence, but Great you were movie. able you to watch it. Jamie Fox. Uh, the one thing we know he shouldn't do, he may have all the moves for basketball, but he does not have the moves to be a pitcher. Um, Amir, how do you read this um, uh, political game? Because here's what I've thought. I, I really lament that we've had red versus blue because it seems like governors right now should be going through best practices. What are they having success with? But it seems like if you're red or blue, you're not talking to the other people. Well, you're 100% right, Bob. And the thing is, is you're right about Dr. Redfield saying we've got to get back to schools. And I think schools are really the most imminent uh, issue right now because that's what's between sure. us and Election Day. Yeah. Uh, and so Trump has been running on the economy. We saw an enormous contraction in the economy. If schools are closed, it's going to just continue to pummel the economy. 
And like Dr. Redfield was saying, schools are where child abuse gets detected. Schools are where kids get their nutrition. Kids are get their mental health counseling. So it's a bigger uh, health crisis to not have kids in school than to put them into school. But we see the teachers unions, which are typically aligned with the Democrats, uh, especially here in New York, uh, doing all they can to stop schools from going back in person and to do things virtually. If you do that, then you're going to have to have parents staying at home with some of their younger children, which is going to stop the, uh, the economy from sort of rebooting on all cylinders. So if they can slow the economy. I see this as a classic red versus blue, because in the beginning, remember, all of the states got on President Trump's case because he said that he had the power to close things down. And he said, well, I'll give that to the states. Let the governors decide what's right for your communities. And now the Democrats start arguing that, oh, no, President Trump hasn't done enough. Well, which one yeah. is it? So we're the real flip-floppers here. They're turning this into a red versus blue issue. Yeah. But I think that Donald Trump needs, you know, his poll numbers, Rasmussen came out today saying his approval rating is 50%. So I think people are seeing that they like the way that that's a yeah. big climb over last week. I think they like the direction that he's taking. I've also seen the polls actually get closer uh, in, in recent days. Uh, Brett, we've got about 30 seconds. I'll, I'll leave the last thought to you as far as uh, what, what do you think is going to happen between now and November 3rd? Well, I think it's going to be interesting if there is if there are debates, because I think that might oh. be the most significant event to, to occur. If we can see um, on prime time a comparison of the candidates, their vision, what they what they expect uh, to accomplish and their responses to what's going on, I think you'll start to see how far left the Democrats have moved and Biden is just happy to be moved in that direction. Yeah. Amir Benno, Brett Tolman, Benu Verghese. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. And folks, we're going to take a break. Be back with more of American Agenda. After